Good morning and welcome to my show. I'm your host, Danny Graham, and I both invite, encourage you to walk with me on the road to wisdom. Good morning, y'all. It's Monday morning. Let's get to walking. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another edition of The Road to Wisdom. I'm your host, Danny Graham, and thank you for joining me. Today's topic, as you can see right here, is walking by faith. Walking by faith. Oh, this is going to be a very good episode in my mind, and I hope that you enjoyed it as well, because a lot this past weekend, I've had a lot of conversations. I've had a lot of text messages. I've had a lot of, of interaction. Um, with people on different topics about faith, about church and the state. As you know, um, this weekend, former President Trump was uh, uh, was attempt, a assassination attempt was made on his life. Uh, like he was slightly injured, maybe some shot in the, near the ear, or the head. Just want to say, thank goodness that he wasn't that um, wasn't killed, and, and and I hope that he is recovering nicely, and I hope that the country can recover from this and we can get back on track. Having said that. Um, the topic, walking by faith. I had a friend of mine who was saying that uh, in one of the past videos I did, some people were saying that you shouldn't confuse church and state. And even my youngest, my, one of my daughters said, you shouldn't confuse church and state. And to a certain aspect, I believe that. But sometimes if you are a Christian or if you're someone, if you're a believer, you have to include God in every aspect of your life. So there are some instances where church and state are going to touch. Uh, should they intermingle and, and be joined at the hip, be tethered together? Not in every, not in every circumstance or every particular uh, situation. There are some situations where I think that if you're a believer, you need to have guidance. You need guidance in every aspect of your life from a spiritual level, from a, as, as far as praying to God. What's really been on my heart, and I know some people may get tired of it, I hope you don't, but and I may be sounding a, a slightly redundant on some cases, but this election, to me, is one of the most important elections spiritually there could be. And some people are like, well, Dan, you need to keep religion. Uh, well, I can't, and I'm not going to do it. And I'm going to tell you why I'm not going to do it. I think that as a Christian, it is my duty to pray and ask God for guidance and one of the big things that I need we for guidance is who should I have leading my country? Who should I have a, a, a voice in, a vote on leading my country? I don't want so I don't want to vote for someone that does ungodly things. I don't want to vote for someone that does when there's certain topics coming on the table or certain sanctions or certain people that, that are put in positions of power to be someone that's ungodly. And I know there's really no 1,000% way to do it, but what you have to do and what I, 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 was, I was taught and what I learned yesterday in a, in a very lengthy conversation with my pastor is that you go look at their platforms, look at the Republican platform, look at the Democratic platform, and then you look and see which one lines up more closely to biblical, to your biblical beliefs. That I think is the most well thought out, most intelligent direction I've been given since the whole time of voting. And you look at, compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges, and for you, the individual, if you're a believer, you go with the one that best lined up with most, uh, that most lines up with the Bible, with what God's plan is. Now, for some, it may be the Democratic Party. For others, it may be the Republican Party. But what I've seen so far is that a lot of people, both black and white, but mainly in my community, is that they have a, an intense hatred for President-elect Donald Trump. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, at one time I had that same that same feeling. I, I heard this past weekend that President Trump, uh, former President Trump, whatever you want to title you want to give him, is the Antichrist. I have no proof of that. And last time I checked, when I read the Bible, I went back and I researched this. The Antichrist is supposed to show up after the rapture. Last time I checked, the rapture hasn't happened. So that kind of debunks that theory. Now, 
in a conversation I had with my pastor, he said the Antichrist maybe have already been born and the rapture may be right around the corner. That makes sense. That's quite um, plausible. That's quite feasible. But right now, today, as I'm speaking, as I'm holding, as you're watching this video, the rapture hasn't happened. So I don't think that former President Trump is the Antichrist. And from what I'm, from what the Bible says, the Antichrist is supposed to be here and supposed to promote peace, a false peace. And President Trump is not trying to promote a false peace, a false peace. He's one of the most divisive presidents we've ever had in the history of the United States. So again, that's another thing that debunks that. But the definition of walking by faith, I want to give to you while I look it up. The biblical definition is trusting God to lead you in the right direction, even when things don't make sense. It also means seeing people from heaven's perspective rather than a worldly point of view. I want to read that one more time because it's very important. Walking by faith is trusting God to lead you in the right direction even when things don't make sense. Right now, the United States, some of the things we're seeing don't make sense. So when things don't make sense and you can't make heads or tails, I suggest that you trust in God. Let God lead you. Let God guide you through this crazy muckety-muck. Also, it means seeing people from heaven's perspective rather than a worldly point of view. That's something we all have a lot of time, a hard time doing. We can't take the high road on some stuff because our brother is saying it, because our friend is saying it, because our parents are saying it, because our sisters are saying it, our brother's saying it. Man, that guy's this, he's that, he's this. Or this woman, she's this, she's that, she's this. We take it for, for whatever they say. We go along with the crowd. But sometimes you got to take back and look at things through a different lens. And the lens that I'm asking everyone to look at it is through heaven's lens, through a heavenly, through a supernatural lens, through what would, God, what would a God do lens. You always see the T-shirts all the time, what would God do? Some of the things that we say, some of the things I heard about the attempt on President Trump's life was that they shouldn't they 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 shouldn't have missed, or he aimed it the wrong direction, or this that and other. Wishing that this man, no matter if you don't like him, and you have every every right not to like him, he has said some things that are very polarizing. He has said some things that are very divisive. I can give you that, but to wish the man death, to wish that he died, wish that the man wouldn't have missed. Is that, is that looking at it from a heavenly prism? I don't think so. Is that looking at it from a high road? Just because you don't like somebody, you wish them death? To me, that's a little extreme. Just saying. Just saying. Um, second, second Corinthians, the fifth chapter and seventh verse says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. So when you can't see things clearly, as a Christian, what does the Bible teach you to do? It teaches you to pray and to ask for God for guidance. Lord, I can't see what's right or wrong right now. The water is very murky. Please guide my thoughts, my actions, my words, and let it be something that is comes to, from you, that is divine, and that is righteous. And Lord, whatever direction you tell me to go in, that's the direction that I'm going to go in. That's what a Christian should do. In my opinion, that's what I'm going to do. So if it ruffles some feathers about why, Danny, you always talking about this election and you shouldn't put church and the state together. Well, guess what? When I don't know what to do, when things look crazy, when I'm confused and I'm and I'm scratching my head, I want clarity. And the only one I know that's going to give me clarity is Jesus. I pray to him. He's going to answer my prayer. He's going to give me a direction. He's going to nod me. He's going to push me in that right direction. He's going to nudge me in that right direction. Whether or not I choose to, to follow that nudge or that direction is totally up to me. That's free will. But guess what? If you want clear, precise, concise advice, then that's what I recommend. Um, definitely for Christians and, and for sinners. I mean, we all are sinners to a certain ex 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 extent. But for believers, those that believe in Jesus Christ, that believe in his doctrine, that believe in the Bible, that believe in the higher power, that is my suggestion. That's what I'm going to do. And I hate to sound redundant, but I think Lord is putting this on my heart 
to try and tell everybody that wants to listen, everyone that cares to listen. Look, this election is very important. We are in troubled times here in the United States. If this, this, I just think, and I could be wrong, but if if you if this if the shooter would have succeeded, it could have caused internal conflict with this country. Let that sink in. If that shooter's bullet would have hit, and President, former President-elect Trump was killed, that would have been very bad for this country. This country could have been an internal conflict, and that is something that no one wants to see. I do not want to see that. So I thank God for for allowing that that shooter to miss, and because I think it would have been much worse had it had the bullet connected. So thank goodness for that. That it did not connect it. If you look up the definition of antichrist, it's mentioned in First John three times. The first time it's mentioned is, is in First John, the second chapter, the 18th verse. And it reads, little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard, the antichrist shall come. Even now, there, may, there are many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. When we see the Antichrist, according to the Bible, what I've read and what I've asked other scholars of the Bible is it's going to be after the rapture. And it's going to be during that time when the devil is running rampant, more rampant than he is now. And this person is going to come on the scene. And they're going to try and reestablish Jerusalem. And they're going to try and there's, there's going to be a whole new peace and all kind of, kind of stuff. But it's going to be this person is going to put themselves <clears throat> in a position that they're considered God, that they're a deity, that their way is the way of the truth and the light, that their way is the doorway to salvation. Do not fall for the okie doke. Do not fall for it. Read your Bible. Like I said, it's in First John. First John talks about it. Second Corinthians. Um, like I said, First John is mentioned three times. First John, second chapter, eighteenth verse, where I just read. The second time it's mentioned in First John is the second chapter, the twenty-second verse, and it reads, "Who is a liar? But he who does no, he who denies that Jesus is Christ, he is antichrist. He denies the Father and the Son. Someone comes in here and tries to tell you something that Jesus, the Father and the Son, don't matter. That my way is the better way, and and, and follow me. It's a sign, an indicator. It is an indicator." That individual or that person or that or that particular group that's teaching that that rhetoric, Antichrist. Last time is is mentioned in the Bible in First John is First John the fourth chapter the third verse, and it says, "And every spirit that confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, and the and this is that spirit of Antichrist where you have heard that it should." That it should come, that it, that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. We see that one more time. As I read a little crazy. This is First John, the fourth chapter, the third verse, and it reads, "And every spirit that confess not that Jesus Christ is come into the flesh is not of God, and this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard." That it should come, and even now already it is in the world. So it says it's even in the world. So what my pastor said is totally true based on what he said. The Antichrist could already have been born, but is waiting for the rapture. Once the rapture happens, then that's when things will be kicked into to high gear. And so just got to make sure, got to make sure that things that are confusing, things that you don't have, that you're not clear on, Things that seems like it is unrighteous, you need to tap into your spiritual your spiritual hotline, which is which is initiated by prayer, praying to God and asking for clarity, asking for discernment, asking for Lord, things aren't clear, and I but I have faith that you're going to guide me through this mess, and that's what I'm tapping into now. It's not clear, at least not to me. It's not clear what direction I should go. Should I go with candidate A or candidate B? It's not clear. Now, there is a lieutenant governor in North Carolina. And I want to make sure I say his name correctly. I want to look it up now. 
His name is Mark Robinson. Mark Robinson has said some very energetic and very promising things to me if you're a believer. And I, and I, I got a clip today where he said something about that some people deserve to die. And my explanation when somebody sent me that, I was like, look, in the Bible, it shows all different ways that people died, that Jesus gave, that God gave direction to people to kill because of the evilness. Um, and the example that I gave that, look, if somebody is committing mass murder or somebody is just doing something that is so heinous and so evil, if he's caught, tried and found to be guilty and, and if the guilt, if the guilty punishment is death by lethal injection or an hot, uh, or electric chair or a gas chamber, then I don't have any issue with that. Um, and maybe it's something I need to, to pray on and, and to to get further enlightenment for it. and maybe Jesus, uh, God needs to touch my heart and change it if, if, if that's the wrong process. But just going out here killing people just senselessly for no reason, then I think there's a punishment that should, that should, to, that should be paid for that. And like I said, if I'm wrong, I, I'll be more than happy to, to say that maybe I was wrong by that. But in those particular scenarios, in that scenario, then I, I think that is, that is acceptable. And like I said, I, 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 if I'm wrong, I'd be more than happy to recant that. But let me see if I can pull up a clip of Mark Robinson, just to let you know. And this is from what I've heard. I haven't got confirmation, but he's possibly on the short list of being uh, Donald Trump's um, VP, which in my opinion would be a very good thing, a very good thing. But let me pull up this video because I definitely want y'all to hear him if you're not familiar with Mark Robinson. And like I said, he's lieutenant governor for uh, North Carolina. In this particular video, he's going to be talking about faith and freedom. It's about a minute and a half. So I'll go ahead and share it with you. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, here we go. You know, she might have some crazy damage. Fantastic, fantastic. How's everybody doing? Good. Very first thing we're going to do as always, we're going to give thanks to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Are there reporters in this room somewhere? I can't see through the light. Are, it's the mainstream media here. If you're here, I want you to hear this. Hear me. I don't care what you say about me. I don't care what you do in your newsroom. I don't care about your plans and your schemes to bring this nation down with your Democratic friends. Why? Because Jesus Christ is still on the throne. You may have your news cameras and your satellites and your 24-hour news, but Jesus Christ holds the world in his hands. And he holds me in it as well. And what he has for me, you cannot keep from coming true. It may not be the governor's mansion. It may not be any political seat. But you will not stop Jesus Christ's will in my life. So I do not fear you. Write your story. Tell your lies. Tell your half-truth. But Christ is still on the throne. And because he lives in my heart and I live for him, I know whatever I need to do on this earth for him, it will get done. So we give him thanks. Now, for me as a believer, it is refreshing to hear someone in the political arena speak that so strongly and so boldly about that. A lot of times, like I said, we want to separate state from church. That's fine. In some instances, I don't think that the state should, should dictate some of the church things, but sometimes you have to get back to get back to a spiritual baseline. A lot of times we live in a world now, in my opinion, where anything goes. You see what you want to say, you wear what you want to wear, you do what you want to do, all this kind of stuff. In some in some cases, I guess that's acceptable, but but it comes down to certain aspects of life, certain morals, certain um decorum, certain things, then we should as believers 
get on board with other believers and try and set a positive platform and a positive baseline for some stuff. Some of this stuff is just way out of control. Some of these things, some of these lifestyles, some of these opinions, some of these shows, some of these, these pronouns, all that kind of stuff, to me, is just way out of control. And if we have an opportunity to put someone in power or put someone in a, in a, in a place that can get back to core values and get back to, to just basic decency in, in, the, in, in our everyday life, I'm all for that. Now, for some people, he may not be your cup of tea. That's your opinion. But I'm saying from my from my opinion, as a believer, as someone who, who, who speaks out strongly um, for, for God being a part of his life and for depending on God and realizing that God is on the throne, that's that's right, that's what I want to hear. Those are the kind of people that I'm going to vote for. And like I said, I'm doing my research on him. He said some controversial things and, and he can say some things, but he hasn't said anything that has totally offended me or totally made me pause for calls and be like, mm, I don't know. I hadn't heard it yet. Um, but of course, you know, there's videos out there, thousands of videos out there. And if he says something, I'm pretty sure if he says something really, truly controversial, or something crazy, it'll pop up. But right now, I've heard rumor that he's maybe one of the names on um, um, Trump's list as VP. If he is, hmm. Just might get my vote um, based on what I've heard and, what, and based on what I've seen so far. But of, of, go, of course, um, to go back to the title, Walking by Faith, when things aren't clear, when you are, are confused about such certain situations, my opinion is 1,000% believe and trust in God. Pray to God for clarity. Pray to God for, pray to God for discernment. And I definitely believe he will answer your question and point you in the right direction. Just my two cents. Now, sometime in life, you're gonna come across individuals that are gonna say some stuff that's gonna that's gonna challenge you spiritually. It's gonna be like, why are you doing this? I don't believe it. The scientific method, this, that, and the other, big bang theory, all this kind of stuff. Those are the, the baselines with the universe is built on. Not not that Bible, not that Adam and Eve, not that Garnet stuff. That's a bunch of malarkey. So you just listen to them, and then if they give you an opportunity to speak back. You tell them something like this. Say, hey, look, for me, I choose to believe the Bible because it's a reliable collection of historical documents written down by eyewitnesses during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses. They report to us supernatural events that took place in fulfillment of specific prophecies and claim that their writings are divine rather than human in origin. And that comes from Paris of Woody Bauckham. You can check him out on YouTube. Fantastic Paris has a lot of good insight on spirituality. Now, if this is the first time you ever see me on this channel, I'm actually do a few things for me. First, please subscribe to the channel because I wanted to grow. Second, hit the notification bell because I don't want you to miss any material that I upload in the future. Third, leave me a comment. Any comment that you leave, I'll definitely read and respond back to you. If you have a particular topic or question that you want to ask me, please leave it. Please do so and leave it in the comment. Also, watch the video from the start to the finish. That helps with the YouTube algorithm. Hey. Thank you all for your support. I definitely appreciate it. It's definitely uh, wanted, and I definitely need it. Um, continue to watch my show, and I'll try to make better content for you and try to make content that's interesting and thought-provoking and will make you, if you haven't already done so, have a start, start a conversation and have a conversation with the Lord. I am fantastically – I am – no, I won't say it. I am fantastically – happy about being a child of God. There's just no other way to say it. Uh, April 21st, 2023 definitely was um, a milestone in my life and definitely one of the best things that ever happened to me in my life. And I want everybody to have that same experience I had and continue to try to 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 learn more and become a tool a tool used by God to to further um to further um, praise his name and to to teach his word and pass his word along. So definitely, definitely check tune back in with me on next my next show, which is Wednesday at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on the Road to Wisdom. I definitely appreciate it. And I hope you have a fantastic day. And as always, God bless you. Mm -hmm.